Hey guys, welcome back to Freckle Face Finance, where we discuss personal finances open and honestly so that you can live the life that you deserve. So today we're going to be discussing the TSP, also known as the Thrift Savings Plan, which is a 401k for government personnel, previously enlisted or currently enlisted military personnel. So today we're going to be discussing three aspects of the TSP. One, what is the TSP? Two, what are the benefits of investing in it? And three, what are your specific investment options? So if that sounds like something that you are interested in, then keep on watching. So even if you're not a current federal government employee or a prior military enlisted personnel, this video may still be beneficial to watch because we're going to go over the 401k benefits. So at the very least, it may give you some questions to take back to your employer to discuss what your 401k offers. So first we're going to discuss what is the TSP or 401k. So the TSP or Thrift Savings Plan is a 401k plan set up by the government for all of its government employees. So if you are employed by the federal government, then you are automatically enrolled in this 401k plan. So what a 401k is, it's actually a contribution from you for your future self for retirement. So every time that you get paid, a small contribution is going to come out of your paycheck and be input into a bank account that is going to be available to you for when you retire. What's great about this plan is that your employer also makes a contribution to you for your retirement. So if you're enrolled in a TSP, then the government contribution for your retirement is going to be 5%. So what that means is that every time that you get paid, a small amount is deducted from your paycheck and input into a bank account that is going to be available for you for when you retire. The government will match dollar for dollar up to 5% of the amount of money that you put into your retirement account. And so if you're not a federal employee, it's definitely worth reaching out to your HR department in order to understand what your employer is contributing to your retirement fund. So you can either contribute to your 401k in a traditional manner or a Roth manner. And so I'll link a video up here where I discuss what the difference was between traditional and Roth IRA. And so in this video, I'll just kind of give a quick summary of what the differences are for a traditional 401k versus a Roth 401k. So a traditional 401k means that you're going to put your money in tax free. So then when you come to retire and you're going to pull out your money, you're going to pay taxes at that point. Versus if you put into a Roth 401k, then that means you're going to be taxed on the money now. And so when you're 59 and a half or whenever you decide to pull out your retirement money, you can actually pull it out tax free. And so if you're wondering which one did I decide to contribute to, I personally contribute 100% of my 401k funds to a Roth 401k account. And so if you're a federal government employee, then your employer automatically contributes their match to a traditional 401k. And so you will probably have a traditional 401k as well as a Roth, even if you decide to contribute 100% of your funds to the Roth account. All of the employer contributions are going to be to the traditional account. Okay, so now that we discussed what the TSP or government 401k is, I'm now going to discuss what are some of the benefits to having one. And if you are a federal employee, I definitely recommend that you have and contribute to a TSP account. So the number one benefit to having a TSP account is that you are going to get employer contribution. So it really doesn't get any better than free money. That's what an employer contribution is. So for up to 5% of everything that you put in, the government is going to put in 5% to match you, dollar for dollar. It really doesn't get any better than that. So even if you're not a government or military personnel, if your employer offers a 401k, you should at least be contributing enough to get the employer match. That is free money. The second benefit to having a TSP is that there are low management fees. And so what that means is that as your account grows and you become more wealthy in your 401k, you're going to spend overall less money than you would if you had a 401k with another company. So typically the companies that manage your 401k will take a small percentage of your account in order to continuously be able to pick funds, provide customer service, update the website. All of that is taken from your account. And so if you have an account with the federal government, a TSP account, um, the amount that you pay in fees is going to be a little bit less than you would if you had an account with someone else. So that definitely um, helps you keep more of your money in your pocket and you're going to spend overall less money in administration fees. The third benefit to having a TSP is that you can actually borrow against your 401k. And I know, I know you guys, that is a lot of, you know, controversy. There's a lot of pros, there's a lot of cons, and people tend to get into a tizzy when you discuss any type of borrowing or taking out your 401k. But just hear me out. 
The TSP allows you to borrow against your 401k. I'm not saying that it's a great thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying that there is an option to do so. And so there are two circumstances that you are able to withdraw money from your TSP account or borrow against it because you're able to pay yourself back. The first circumstance would be if you need to take out money in order to get a down payment for a house. I think that there are a lot of banks that actually offer this option, but what I haven't seen is that you're actually able to take out money for a second reason, which is if you are experiencing a financial hardship, then you are able to borrow against your 401k and they'll put you on a payment plan so that you're able to pay yourself back. There is absolutely no penalty for withdrawing your 401k if you're making a loan against it if you have a TSP account. Now, I personally have researched a ton of different 401ks and employment options. So if your employer has an option for you to take out a hardship loan against your 401k, then let me know. Let us know down in the comments below because I personally have not seen it. I think that that's a benefit that I personally have only seen offered by the TSP. So if your company offers it, let me know down in the comments below. But yes, those are the two options that you're able to take out a loan against your 401k and you pay yourself back with interest as if the money was never deducted. Now, as a disclaimer, I'm not saying that you should or should not do that. I'm just letting you know that that is an option if you have a TSP. All right, you guys, so now that we've discussed what the TSP is and what the benefits to having one is, we're gonna go ahead and discuss the six different funds that you can invest in if you have a TSP account. So I didn't put this in any particular order, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just briefly describe the six different investment options that you have. So number one is the G fund. So if you have a TSP account, whenever you officially started your government or military career, your employer automatically enrolled you in the G fund. And so the G fund is short term US treasury securities. And so those are very safe investment, or I wouldn't even consider them investment, savings options. And so if you made no selections on your own within the TSP account, then you are automatically enrolled in the G fund. And so I'm gonna go ahead and give a snapshot up here um, based off the TSP website of how the fund has been performing. So I personally consider the G fund to be a very safe um, investment or savings option for the TSP. And it's really just a glorified savings account. That's what the G fund is. So I'm gonna go ahead and give a small disclaimer because <laughs> it's my YouTube channel and I can say what I want. If you are more than 10 years out from retirement, you shouldn't have anything invested in the G fund. Like you definitely have time on the horizon. You have investment opportunities. If you are more than 10 years from retirement, do not invest in a G fund at all. Point blank, period. Now I also wanna tell you this, I am not a financial advisor. I make these videos for educational purposes only based off of my experience and what my opinion is. Um, so don't take this as financial advice, but I will say this, I don't have any of my money invested in the G fund. Absolutely none of it. <laughs> so take that with a grain of salt. I'm just giving y'all my own personal opinion. So next we have the F fund. I'm going to go ahead and include a small snapshot from the TSP website right about here. And so the F fund is TSP's version of investing in U.S. government bonds. And so just like the G fund, I would consider that a safe savings account for you to invest into for your retirement. It's not very risky, um, but if you don't take a lot of risk, you're not going to see a lot of growth. So next up, we have the C fund. So the C fund is TSP's version of the S&P 500. And so what that is, that is the top 500 large to medium companies in the US economy. So I'll go ahead and leave a screenshot here of the top 10 companies that the C fund is currently invested in. So the C fund, I would consider an investment fund because you are investing in the top 500 companies in the US economy. So your account is gonna have some ups, it's gonna have some downs, but over the long run, you should see a steady increase in your investment. So next up is the S fund. And so the S fund is the TSP's version of total market index. And so what that means is that this particular fund is investing in small to medium companies that are not included in the S&P 500. And so this will kind of give you an opportunity to invest in smaller companies across the total market index of the US economy. So just like the C fund, I would consider the S fund to be an investment fund. And so your account is gonna have highs, it's gonna have lows, but over a steady period of time, you are gonna see a increase in your investment. It's not a savings account. So I'm gonna go ahead and include a snapshot of the top 10 companies that the TSP is currently investing for its S fund. So next up we have the I fund. 
And so the I fund is the international fund. And so this will give you an opportunity to invest in international companies in order to prepare for your retirement. And so this will allow you to tap into markets such as Europe, Australia, and the Far East. And so this will give you the opportunity to invest in international companies um, that are not US based. I'm gonna include a snapshot of the top 10 companies that TSP identifies to be included in the international fund. So last but not least are the life cycle funds. So there are a lot of debates on whether or not you should be investing in the life cycle funds. So I'm personally doing a ton of research because I want to put together a video on what I found on whether or not you should be investing in the life cycle funds for TSP. So I don't have an answer right now, but I'll just go over what the life cycle funds are. So the life cycle funds are different combinations of the other five funds that are handpicked by investment professionals that are supposed to give a target date of your retirement. And so the life cycle funds are based on how much time you have from retirement. And so these are selected by investment professionals and the closer that you are to retirement, they will swap out more riskier investments and replace them with more safe investments, such as government, US securities and bonds. And so for example, if you have a retirement date of 2025, 23, so two years. If you had two more years to retirement, they will take out the riskier investments and replace them with things such as the G fund, um, the F fund, and they'll take out those C funds, I funds, um, in order to give you a more stable investment strategy for retirement. And the farther away that you are from retirement, so let's say you're retiring in 40 years, then you'll have less government securities, less bonds, and you'll have more riskier investments because you have more time to make that time up and invest risky. And so if you're wondering what the debate is, there have been some professionals that are saying that the life cycle funds are not as beneficial as selecting your own investment opportunities. And so I want to see if that's true. So if you're interested in, in me following up to this video to include if the life cycle funds are actually, you know, helpful or harmful to your investment strategy for retirement, then leave me a comment down below. I'll make sure that I tag you in the future video that I come up with once I finish my research or if you turn on a notification bell and that way you'll make sure that you're notified for any future videos that I have coming out. Also, before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and link a video up here. I did a walkthrough or like a user guide of the TSP's website. So whether you're new to federal government or if you've been in for a while, they actually have a new website. And so I went ahead and did a beginner friendly user guide of how to walk through the TSP website so that you can see all the options that you have when selecting your benefits. All right, you guys, so that is it for today's video. If you liked it or found it helpful even a little bit, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel so that this video can be pushed out to a larger audience. All right, you guys, I will see you in my next one. As always, thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.